In this session, I am going to explain colligative properties. Okay. So previous uh, we studied one of the related concept to the colligative properties that is a vapor pressure of solution. Okay. If you have a clear cut idea about the vapor pressure of solution, these are very easy to understand here. Okay. So once I would like to uh, recall that again the same the vapor pressure what I explained that. Okay. So generally, uh, when we are uh, studied with respect to vapor pressure of solution, a solution which contain volatile solvent, volatile solvent. Now uh, the solution I am taking with respect to the pure solvent here, I am a uh, volatile solvent is there. So volatile solvent, nothing but a pure solvent is there. Pure solvent usually containing more vapor pressure when compared to the solution. So here, for this volatile solvent, when I add a a non-volatile solute, non-volatile solute, okay, what happens, the vapor pressure will be going to decreases, okay. So, when you are adding a non-volatile solute to that volatile solvent, the vapor pressure of solution is going to decreases. This concept we already discussed in that, okay, in previous video, once you can go through that vapor pressure of solution, then you will be get clear cut idea. So here related to this one, the one of the point I am given that. So for example, here I am added a 10 grams of uh, sucrose. 10 grams of sucrose. Okay. So 10 grams of sucrose, I observed that how much of it is going to decrease in vapor pressure. Another bigger, the same experiment I am doing with the help of uh, 10 grams of. Okay. So whatever the different type of glucose or uh, urea I am adding. So in this one, I observed that there is the same difference I observed that. But whereas, when I am changing the quantity of this solute, then maybe in the second case, I am going to add a 30 grams of glucose. So in these two beakers, when I observed that experimentally, so initially 10 grams of sucrose, 10 grams of glucose when I added, I got the same change in the vapor pressure. But when I added 10 grams of sucrose in one beaker, 30 grams of glucose in another beaker, I am getting a different one. So that means the change in vapor pressure majorly, it is going to depend on the quantity of the uh, non-volatile solute. Irrespective of its nature, whatever you are adding the sucrose or glucose, when you are adding the 10 gram, 10 gram, you are getting the same. But when I am added with a different type of quantity, I am getting the different type of one. So there are some properties are there. So, which are going to depend on the number of solute particles irrespective of their nature. Okay. So, those type of uh, properties usually we can call that colligative properties. Okay. So, the properties which depends on number of solute particles irrespective of their nature. Okay. So, relative to the total number of particles present in the solution, such properties are called colligative properties. So majorly here we have four different types of colligative properties. So what is a relative lowering of the vapor pressure of solvent, an elevation in the boiling point of the solvent, depression in the freezing point, and osmotic pressure of the solution. Okay. So in this section, I am going to explain what is a relative lowering of the vapor pressure and how we calculate the molar mass of solute which is present in solution. Okay. Now let us see the relative lowering of the vapor pressure. Now let us see the relative lowering of vapor pressure. So here what I am given the point, when I am added a non-volatile solute, when I am added a non-volatile solute to that a pure volatile solvent, okay. So what happens here the vapor pressure is going to decreases. Okay. So non-volatile solute when I am added for this, so here the vapor pressure is going to decreases. The decrease I am showing with respect to delta P. Okay. So delta P always I can show with respect to P naught minus P. Delta P is equal to P naught minus P. Why? Because the P naught is a greater pure solvent vapor pressure. Okay. So here it is also possible to show with respect to P naught minus P S. Okay. So whatever it may be, both you can possible to write. So P naught is nothing but a vapor pressure of pure solvent. Ps is equal to vapor pressure of solution. Which solution? The solution which containing a non-volatile solute. Okay. So here, according to Raoult's law, according to Raoult's law, 
so what we are given the vapor pressure of solution the vapor pressure of solution is directly proportional to mole fraction of solvent okay already i explained when i use that a and b a is the must be solvent b is the solute if in the some reference they use that 192 one is a solvent two is a solute okay so according to raoult's law the ps is directly proportional to xa so why because here i am using the non volatile solute in a volatile solvent so that's why the total vapor pressure of solution is majorly depends on the mole fraction of solvent only so here it is possible that ps is equals to a p not x a okay so what is the p not a vapor pressure of a pure solvent okay what is the xa mole fraction mole fraction of solvent okay so here when i am writing this equation with respect to ps is equals to p not xa i am making with the help of solute xb you know that xa plus xb is equals to 1 okay the sum of mole fraction of the components is must be equals to 1 so when you simplify this you get ps okay to p not minus p not xb okay so when you are changing with respect to p not so i am making with respect to here ps minus p not is equals to minus p not xb otherwise you can make a p not minus ps is equals to p not xb when i am sending the p not here we get p not minus ps by p not is equals to xb okay so this is the p not minus ps what i am given the p not minus ps lowering of vapor pressure lowering of vapor pressure when you are adding the non volatile solute the vapor pressure is going to decreasing that i am showing the relate lowering of vapor pressure the delta p when you are given the relative to the total a pure solvent vapor pressure this we are given the relative lowering of vapor pressure the relative lowering of vapor pressure is going to equal to that mole fraction of solute mole fraction of solute okay so this is the mathematical expression for the relative lowering of vapor pressure by using this one i am going to find out that molar mass of solute okay so what is the xb xb is equals to we are given that nb by na plus mb okay so you have that already idea about that mole fraction so p not minus ps by p not is equals to xb i am changing that nb by na plus nb okay so uh, based on that whatever that mole fraction of solute here that a and b components are there so number of moles of b by total number of moles so here generally for very dilute solutions here we are dealing with the dilute solutions for dilute solutions what you can expect that na is far greater than nb okay so there is a nb is a negligible so i am making that negligible of nb here what do you get that p not minus ps by p not is equals to nb by na nb by na what is the nb number of moles of solute what is the na number of moles of solvent we know that number of moles of solvent is equals to weight by molecular weight okay so number of moles is equals to weight by molecular weight when i am making the change here here you get wb by mb what is the wb weight of solute what is mb molar mass of solute na is equals to wa by ma what is that wa the weight of solvent and molar mass of solvent so when you are writing that a mathematical expression for this so p not minus p as by p not is equals to wb by mb into ma by wa so this is the formula 
this is the formula to find out the molar mass of solute the molar mass of solute whatever we are adding for this we are finding out that practically by using this experiment that p0 minus ps by p0 is equals to wb by mb into ma by wa okay so what is the wb weight of solute what is the mb molar mass of solute ma is equals to molar mass of solvent and wa is equals to weight of solvent okay so this is only applicable for dilute solution clear cut now let us see a relationship between rlvp and molality okay so whatever the formula i have given which is uh, helpful for the dilute solution i am using the same formula a p0 minus ps by p0 is equals to wb by mb into ma by wa so for this uh, equation just i am making the change i am multiplying with 1000 and i am dividing with 1000 there is no change okay so here uh, when you studied that a concentration terms a molarity normality molality especially okay the number of moles of solute which are dissolved in 1 kg of solvent or we are taken with that 1000 grams of solvent especially that we express it as molality okay so here this equation i am given in the form of wb by mb into 1000 by wa what will have ma by 1000 okay so here the whole part i am going to write as small m what is a small m molality so small m into capital ma by 1000 okay so this is the relationship between that rlvp relative lowering of vapor pressure and molality of solution so what is the ma molar mass of solvent clear okay sir if the given solution is not dilute okay so this formula is applicable no we have an alternate formula when the solution is not a dilute okay so to derive that i am using this equation okay so initially what i am given that a p0 minus ps by p0 is equals to nb by na plus nb to derive this uh, to derive this reverse this equation whatever that equation one i am taking that uh, reverse equation one what do you get that p0 by p0 minus ps is equals to na plus nb by nb so i am simplifying this p0 by p0 minus ps is equals to na by nb plus 1 nothing but nb by nb is equals to 1 so i am sending here 1 so p0 p0 minus ps minus 1 is equals to na by nb so when you are simplifying this you got p0 minus p0 plus ps by p0 minus ps is equals to na by nb so what you left here p0 p0 get cancelled we left a ps by p0 minus ps is equals to na by nb okay so this is the equation is helpful okay to write the re relative lowering of vapor pressure alternate formula to find out that a molar mass of solute so when i am substituting that na and nb you will be get the same like this clear okay so this is the alternate formula when a solution is not dilute when a solution is not dilute clear so these are the different type of formulas which are helpful to find out that molar mass of solute and especially the relationship between the RLVP and molality. Clear? Thank you.